orbicularis myotomy for essential blepharospasm. Benign essential blepharospasm is a disabling condition. Currently, two treatments are available. One, Botox injection. Two, orbicularis myectomy. Botox injections have important local and general side effects, some of which can be quite serious. Botox weakens squeezing but also weakens levator action. The patient is unable to open the eyes even after the orbicularis spasm has passed. Quite troublesome. Anderson myectomy designed in 1981 involves extensive removal of orbicularis muscle and this is done after making an incision on the bro line there are numerous complications and problems after Anderson surgery and hence it's not a popular method and more and more people depend upon Botox. My orbicularis myotomy is a new technique. It involves breaking orbicularis ring in both the lids by transverse myotomy of orbicularis fibers. The surgery of radial or transverse myotomy is done with fugo blade. The fugo blade incises the tissues without charring or burning. That is its great property. It ablates tissues like an eczema laser does. Therefore, there is little or no post-operative reaction. The surgery is done under local anesthesia. Here we are incising the skin and the orbicularis muscle of the lower lid with a hundred micron tip of Hugo blade set at lowest uh, energy. You can also use 300 micron tip at at higher energies the orbicularis fibers are being cut transversely and it is surprising how strong and thick these fibers are the reason being that they have been active strongly active for a very long time. So this is a simple process. Keep cutting the circular fibers till whole depth is cut and then we apply sutures to the skin. I use stainless steel sutures superficially they fall off by themselves. It takes only a few minutes to do 
one muscle, one side of the muscle. Now cutting the upper orbicularis fibers, giving local anesthesia. Once again using 100 micron fugo blade tip. A very important precaution is this one is that we preserve the marginal strip of the orbicularis so that the patient has no problem in blinking. The spasm is controlled, gets controlled, but the blinking process is not adversely affected if we save the marginal strip or even a little bit of the muscle in front of the tarsal plate. And look how thick these orbicularis muscle fibers are. Once in a while you can have bleeding from the incision line. In that case we use 600 micron tip of fugo blade at medium or high intensity and that stops bleeding and rarely we need an artery forceps to control the bleeding. The surgery takes only a few minutes and this is followed by application of 80 micron steel sutures applied superficially to the skin. They don't cause any reaction and they fall off by themselves in a few weeks or months. And they cause no reaction at all. Now that finishes the surgery of orbicularis myotomy as developed by me. This patient had a miserable life for more than two years before she came for surgery. There is blepharospasm and there are movements of the face and the tongue. And four days later, that is how she looks like very calm, happy as well as confused. And three months later, she looks like a normal person, blinking normally, the spasm is totally gone. I ask her to squeeze and she squeezes and opens easily, fully recovered three months after surgery.